And um, I've occasionally been in teaching circumstances where somebody wants to know something and then quickly realizes it's going to take more effort than they want to put in or more time than they want to put in. And sometimes I recognize that and I say, just say, look, you know, this is, there's, there's, there's a certain level of, of teaching we can do here, sort of the, the Bohr model versus quantum theory, <laughs> right? I'll give you a close enough approximation for what you want, but sometimes what they want and what they need is genuinely, they're going to have to put in some time for that. Mm -hmm. And then they sometimes will actively resist. And I say, no, no, what you need in, involves a lot of work, and I'm happy to walk you through this, but, but I'm getting a lot of resistance. Um, do you have any ideas about how I can help people? I mean, ultimately, they have to choose to learn. They have to choose to put in that effort. I can't do it for them. But what ideas do you have about how I can teach or how I can interact with people, how I can structure my teaching, whatever it is, to encourage them and make it easiest for them to do that? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I mean, that's something I think we all ourselves struggle with, whether or not we're totally consciously aware of it, is that, that kind of... That, that barrier, that resistance to, okay, I want to I want to do this thing mm -hmm. and I'm trying to kind of keep it focused on what I'm doing and I think I need to know that, but that looks big and scary and I don't know if I need to invest that time or it's, it's quote-unquote wasted time, you know, right, especially right. when you're on a deadline and stuff. So I totally appreciate that. Uh, I love the Bohr model analogy, by the way. I did a few years of chemistry when I was in university and that was the biggest letdown for me that in high school they taught the Bohr model. I said, what? There's nothing like that. Anyway, I, I, I'm still bitter. I'm not a chemist. Maybe that's why. I don't know. Anyhow, so what I will try to do in situations like that is, well, I work a lot with analogies or something approximating analogies, which itself is a bit circular sounding, but I'll try to sort of hang things on broader examples to feel out what do they really want to know. Because sometimes in those situations, part of the reason what they're asking about seems like it's uncovering this entire field in which you could do your own PhD in is because they don't actually know the problem that they're trying. You know, like there's a misunderstanding, some sort of fundamental misunderstanding about the problem that they're trying to address. So sometimes if I poke at it long enough, I'm like, ah, uh, actually you could just do this. <laughs> you know, and it's, it turns out this is a really short thing. So I'll kind of sniff around and make absolutely sure that that's really, or at least as sure as I can, that's really where they, they need to go. Uh -huh. and, and then I try to spend time understanding where they're coming from. Like, what's motivating them to solve this, this problem? Where, where is it coming from? How is this going to feed into, into their matrix? And try to look for ways where I can try to stitch that knowledge in there and show them the value. Because if I don't do that, then the, the worry is that I'm just a person that's sitting there who's this, you know, so-called expert in computer science, and I'm like, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm just this fetishist that really, really likes this particular subdomain. And, you know, there's that harder, it's harder to get the buy-in because you're probably just, oh, you know, experts, here they go, blah, blah, blah. So how can I bring it around so that they can actually see the value in this and, and that the time has to be spent to, to learn this? So, you know, I'll just kind of try to get to know them a little bit. And then I might kind of throw them a few crumbs, you know, like start to solve a bit of something or show them a little bit of something and give give them a chance to see how it could work and then have them try it and in their attempting to try it start to point to, well, you need to understand this, you need to understand this, you need to, you know, all of these different different things to hopefully try to to motivate them. Um, but you're totally right. I mean, they have to they have to buy in and despite your best efforts, they may walk away saying thank you very much and never touch it again because they think you're crazy and you can't always you can't right. always fix that. Mm -hmm. 